Hello and welcome back to the Battle Room. My name is Colin, also known as the Battle Room. I'm a competitive player. I've played for almost 10 years. I've placed third at the World Championships, so I think I'm pretty decent at this game sometimes. Um, but let's talk about the top 10 Pokemon that are currently be using, currently being used in Scarlet and Violet. So obviously we've had the letter for a couple days now. This is on Showdown, so we have a bunch of Showdown stats, which are pretty legit when it comes to looking at uh, how well Pokemon are doing. Um, but we have the showdown stats here. We got percentages. We got numbers. We got stats. So let's go through it. So um, the number one most used Pokemon is Fluttermane right now. Um, so this is the past paradox form of Mistrevis. Um So yeah, that's pretty exciting. Like one of the new Pokemon is just completely tearing it up. Obviously the stats are incredible. Like <laughs> its defense sucks, but everything else is like godlike for this Pokemon. It's just a glass cannon bomb with also pretty great special defense like pretty bulky there um currently it's being used at 32 percent which so like last format was series 12 is restricted format so it's very different in terms of numbers but like incinor is at 70 percent usage roughly um but i would say in like these kind of formats 40 percent is like where it's really really broken and you must have it on your team but nothing is really at that stage yet obviously this is this is a brand new game we got brand new Pokemon. So Fluttermane is doing really well for itself at 32%. Um, the most popular moves are Dazzling Gleam, obviously. Shadow Ball, Protect, and then we have Moonblast, Icy Wind. It starts to get kind of crazy. This Pokemon runs a lot of very unique moves. Um, a lot of them are running Protects. We're not seeing Choice Specs everywhere. Um, there's no data on items yet. But we're not seeing Choice Specs being... You know, it's, it's still pretty dominant, but... I think what makes this Pokemon so good is its utility. It gets, obviously it has great stabs. Fairy Ghost is really, really good offensively. Um, protects good, Moonblast is a stab, but then here's where it gets spicy. We've got stuff like Icy Wind. We've got stuff like Trick Room, Calm Mind, Sunny Day even. Um, Substitute, Protect, uh, Trick Room, Mystical Fire, Icy Wind, Moonblast, whatever you want, right? This Pokemon really does it all. And I think that's why we're seeing so much Fluttermane right now is that it is so versatile. It pairs well with a lot of things. And it can really just run a multitude of sets, whatever your team desires. So this is just a lot of traits of a very good Pokemon that I expect to see most of the season. Um, teammates, um, Amoongus is almost at 50%, which makes sense because Amoongus is the second most used Pokemon. Um, and then just a lot of fire types. Arcanine, obviously a good defensive fire type for your team. Um, Chi Yu, which is an amazing offensive fire type for Fluttermane because you're able to um, proc uh are you able to lower special defense with chiyu's ability torkoal makes sense because torkoal procs the ability that fluttermane has roaring moon just a good pokemon and then just like kind of whatever just kind of a bunch of stuff lots of tatsugiri and dodonzo actually um but yeah and then the terra types we're seeing a lot of fairy ghost and then a bunch of random stuff which is interesting um i guess the stats aren't really like super great yet for the terra types so we won't talk about it too much but yeah, so this is just the makings of a good Pokemon, super flexible. We're seeing it with all types of team comps. This alone, these three fire types, just tell me all different teams, right? It's very defensive, like more switch heavy oriented teams. Offensive, a nuclear, like a nuclear bomb type of team where you're just spamming stuff with choice specs. And then Torkoal, which is like a, you know, like a, maybe a trick room type of team, you know? Just a lot of stuff going on here. We got Dodonzo, which is very, uh, you know... Very centric around that Pokemon. Brute Bonnet, another support. So just a lot going on with this Pokemon. Just very splashable, very good Pokemon. Makes sense that it's number one usage. Number two is Amoongus. I don't really need to introduce the guy, do I? He's been dominant since his since 2011, when this Pokemon came into being. It was like one of the strongest Pokemon in the game. It. I don't think it won Worlds, actually, the first year it was out. But it's won Worlds before. It does really, really great things. It's got amazing bulk. And it has Spore, right? What else could you ask for? Um, okay, these stats are weird. Because there's no way 30% of Amoonguses are using Spore. <laughs> there's no way more than two-thirds of Amoongus don't run Spore. But anyways, um, we got Spore, Rage Powder, Protect, Clear Smog. So Clear Smog's been really, really good lately. Just because it does beat Dodonzo. So that's Dododonzo, whatever that guy's name is. Um, and then you just kind of put filler anyways, like Spore, Rage, Part of Protect is like the moves, and then you just kind of like whatever you think your team needs, right? Um, so Amoongus, I don't really need to talk about Amoongus too much. Um, a lot of Terra Waters apparently, uh, which makes sense because it's a good defensive Terra type. Um, very, does very well with Fluttermane Arcanine. I mean, it makes sense. These three are the most used in the game. 
so it makes sense that all three are just used together, right? And it's a good core. You got Fairy Ghost, Grass Poison, and Fire Type with Intimidate. So you get a lot of different pieces from doing something like this. Um, it also is being used with the Snow Leopard here, Roaring Moon, a little bit of Iron Hands too with like Trick Room centric teams, um, Dragonite. Yeah, so it's just it's just a very flexible Pokemon. I mean, Amoongus is like, it can be paired with Trick Room, it can be paired with Setup, it can be paired with Tailwind if you want to run max speed Amoongus. There's just so many options with Amoongus, so very splashable Pokemon, and I don't think it has a lot of natural predators. Um, Arcanine at 25%. Um, so Arcanine, premier Intimidate user. So the main reason Arcanine is going to be so damn good in this format is just because of Intimidate. Intimidate is not as good as it was before. Um, we have stuff like Clear Amulet, all those ability changes in Sword and Shield. If you're on like Own Temple, you can't get Intimidated. There's a lot of uh, a lot of nerfs to Intimidate, but that doesn't mean that Intimidate still isn't good. And 25% of the player base wants to use Arcanine. Um, I do think he might fluctuate a little bit. Personally, Arcanine's felt a little lackluster to me. I haven't played too much of the game. I spent a couple hours playing offline and I streamed a little bit. I don't want to say I'm an expert by any means, but Arcanine is definitely not needed on any team. I think Arcanine is very good. In some matchups, it's looking good when you can actually intimidate stuff, but there's a lot of things to beat Intimidate, so it makes sense that he's pretty low. If Intimidate was as strong as it was in the past, this guy would probably be at like 40%. Um, the move sets aren't too crazy. A lot of Flare Blitz, a lot of Will-O-Wisp, Snarl, Protect. Decent amount of extreme speed and then coverage moves. Arcanine gets it all, right? You can Wisp to lower their physical attack. You can Snarl to lower their special attack. And then you have Flare Blitz, which is just a good fire move. Like, those three moves you can't go wrong with. But then, you can add some Spice. You can press Protect. Great move. You could run Extreme Speed, so you have priority. You could run Helping Hand, so your other Pokemon can get nuked. while uh, You can nuke their other Pokemon while they fake you out. Just a lot of good moves. Um, again, it's paired with these two Pokemon. Um, Roaring Moon as well. Like, Roaring Moon with those three just seems like a very very solid core at the moment um also paired with drag with uh, dragonite paired with corviknight sylvan it really just is such a splashable pokemon again these pokemon are good because they can fit on so many teams and that's the that's the story of the big three i think right now those three pokemon are the mons to think about and make sure you have good matchups versus and that you're not crumbling when you play against an arcanine or a, a, a flutter main because these pokemon are very very strong right now and they're just causing problems. So um, they're just very good on any team. If you need figuring out a last slot, I bet you one of them fits on your team. Now next up is Torkoal. So Torkoal has received some buffs in a way. Um, well, first off, it got Helping Hand, which is an actual buff. That's a good move for Torkoal. But also, because of the way that the game works, the past forms, they have this ability called Protosynthesis, Photosynthesis, whatever. It's a special ability exclusive to Roaring Moon, Fluttermane, um, where are the other ones? Brute Bonnet. Uh, yeah, it just I think there's six of them, but Screamtail as well and Great Tusk. So there's a lot of Pokemon. I might be missing one. But a lot of Pokemon benefit from the sun because it basically gives them a boost. Now, if it's speed, it's 1.5 boost, which is really, really good. And if it's anything else, it's about 20% boost or 25% boost, which is pretty solid in and of itself just by setting up the sun. So Torkoal received a buff in terms of how much he can help his teammates. So I think it makes sense that Torkoal is doing so well. Now, Torkoal in the past has been a pretty solid Pokemon. It mainly powers up its sun buddies, and it's still doing the same here. I'm gonna, let's look at the teammates. So Fluttermane and Roaring Moon, I, right off the bat, by the way, Fluttermane, Roaring Moon, Lilligant, the first three teammates all benefit from chlorof or from Drought. Um, we've got Chlorophyll and the two Protosyntheses. So basically Torkoal is just buffing these teammates and just making them shine. Lilligant probably isn't used with anything else but Torkoal, right? 98% of teams with Lilligant have Torkoal. That's how much Lilligant needs Torkoal. But these two just benefit a lot from having Torkoal existing and just being with him. Um, so it makes sense, uh, Torkoal being used with these Pokemon primarily, again, buffing them. And then Iron Hands, it doesn't buff, but that helps set up Trick Room, so does Ndidi, this Mon does as well. Like, these three are just Trick Room helpers, Screamtail benefits from him as well, and sets up Trick Room, so it just makes sense. Like, <laughs> all these Pokemon are just setting up Trick Room, helping him set up Trick Room, or sweeping in Trick Room. Um, it gets a little weirder towards the bottom, but... Torkoal right now is just so versatile. You can run Helping Hand, you can run Yawn, you can run Eruption, just as a Trick Room Sweeper. You can Terra Fire Eruption, which is ridiculous, by the way. I don't think there's any other Eruption users. So this Pokemon just goes incredibly, incredibly hard in Trick Room. And it's also has support moves, like Helping Hand and Yawn. And Body Press. 
Um, you don't actually have to run a lot of uh, attacks. It has a crazy defense stat that you can just body press things with. So basically, Torkoal is the jack of all trades right now. You can use it to sweep, to support, and it just synergizes with so many good Pokemon, right? Like, Fluttermane is the most popular Pokemon in the game, arguably the best, and it's most, it, it buffs it. So why wouldn't Torkoal be good? It's buffing the best Pokemon. It's buffing Roaring Moon, who I personally love dearly. I think it might be the best Pokemon. It just feels so good to use. It's, Torkoal's just helping everything. So Torkoal's so good. Grimmsnarl at fifth place is a little weird to me. I actually don't think Grimmsnarl is like that great. I don't think it's bad, but I think Dynamax was a big reason Grimmsnarl was being used. I kind of have a feeling that Grimmsnarl's usage will go down, and right now everyone just wants to use it because it got a new toy. It did receive Parting Shot in the buffs, so I kind of feel like everyone just wants to use Parting Shot Grimmsnarl, even though it's not amazing. But one thing Grimmsnarl does have going for it that nothing else does is its versatility. It's got Parting Shot, it's got Screens, it's got Spirit Break, Fake Out, Thunder Wave, Taunt, Foul Play, Fake Tears, Sucker Punch. It can do it all. It can be a pure support. It can actually do damage because again, the Pokemon aren't like crazy statted up. We're not fighting Kyogre. We're not fighting Groudon every game rotation. So we can actually deal damage with this good with this guy. And Fairy Dark is pretty good typing. It matches up decently into Fluttermane. You can Sucker Punch it before it can move, which is great. If you want to run that, you can also Thunder Wave it and slow it down because this Pokemon is extremely fast. Um, you could set up Light Screen against it. It, it just, it, it very much combats Fluttermane in a way. It's decent versus it. it gets, there's a lot of options. Um, and it's just so supportive. I think it's just really the versatility. Because if you see a Grimstone on the screen, it realistically could press all 10 of these moves. Like, there's no saying it's going to be screens. It could be a full damage Grimstone. It could be Fake Out plus Thunder Wave and then Spear Pick Sucker Punch. It could be Foul Play, Taunt, Double Screens. You really don't know. This Pokemon really does it all, and I think that's why it's being used, but I do think that it's going to plummet in usage. I don't think it's that great. It's not bad, though. Um, we're seeing a lot with Arcanine and uh, this guy. This guy's really good at pressing Body Press, so it makes sense. It's good with Titar and Ting Lu. It's, it's very much just like... Um, making these other Pokemon strong. It's helping set up screens or faking out for a Pokemon that needs support or set up and then they become strong. So I kind of think that's where Grimmsnarl is being used. But yeah, it's just versatility is insane. Number six is Roaring Moon. So this is probably my favorite Pokemon they've added to the game. I absolutely love using this Pokemon. It's so much fun. I've only played, again, I haven't played like super duper much, but when I played, I was practicing with the Roaring Moon team and holy crap, I love this Pokemon. It has so much going for it. Its stats are crazy, it's very fast, it has a very strong attack stat. Its defense kind of sucks, but everything else looks great. Um, a lot of times you're going to see the Dragon Dance set. When I used Dragon Dance, it felt super duper good. Um, I ran Dragon Dance, Dragon Claw Protect. Uh, this thing has a bunch of amazing Terras. You can Terra into Dark or Dragon. Obviously, your stabs, great. You can also turn into a Steel type. That's what I was practicing with, and I really, really enjoyed Terra Steel. Just because I was able to just smack people around and start to beat... Um, the things that normally counter Roaring Moon, such as Fairies um, and Fluttermane. But then also you can turn into Flying uh, flying One, you can run Booster Energy, which your item gets consumed, and now you have a base 110 Flying Move Acrobatics with Booster Energy. Very strong stuff. You can also opt to just run Crunch or Tailwind. Um, you can run EQ. But a lot of the, a lot of the time you're going to see, you can run Band as well. I know Joe UX9 was spamming Band. But there's just a lot of options for Roaring Moon, and I think it's just a very flexible Pokemon that you can kind of fit into your team as this very strong, speedy attacker. Um, Partner-wise, again, it's just Fluttermane, Amoongus, Arcanine. I think it's a pretty godlike core. Um, it can be paired with Torkoal as well. Um, the Leopard does really well because it lowers defense, so the Leopard plus Roaring Moon is a very, very potent combo. Um, yeah, just a very flexible Mon. Yeah, we see a lot of flying, a little steel, a little fire too, just to get rid of that fairy weakness. So... Yeah, I mean, with Terra types, this Pokemon is just feels like it was designed to be used with Terra, and I think it's very good at doing that. This is like my favorite Pokemon. I'm probably going to make a whole video on Roaring Moon because I'm just obsessed with Roaring Moon. It's so much fun to use. Um, so we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're on seven here. Iron Hands. So this is the past or future form of Hariyama. Um, there isn't too much to talk about, I think. Like, its stats are incredible. Um... <laughs> like these three alone are insane 108 140 154 that's crazy it's special defense kind of sucks but it's hp stat are so good that if you run something like assault vest we don't have item data you can run assault vest and it's just absolutely insane it's a little slow but it pairs extremely well with trick room 
Um, but you don't have to use it in Trick Room, and I think that's why we're seeing the flexibility of Iron Hands. It's basically just one of the best fighting types in the game, and it's just extremely bulky, very hard to KO. A lot of times you're going to see Fake Out Close Combat. Wild Charge is like the core. You can opt to sub any of those out. You could run Drain Punch over CC. You could run Thunder Punch over Wild Charge. You could run Ice Punch. You could run Protect. It gets a lot of good coverage. Um, yeah, even some Steel Moves. It's just a lot of good coverage from Iron Hands. Um, again, it just pairs well with Trick Room. And it's, you know, it's pretty slow, but it's so bulky that you can use it out of Trick Room as well. Um, you're going to see a lot of, a lot of Stab fire fighting electric that's it stabs pretty pretty common for the terror type but yeah it's doing really really well um at 16 percent obviously it's been kind of a drop off like from arcanine to i think torkoal is doing pretty well but like even torkoal to grimstone is like a four percent drop and now we're eight percent below torkoal so you can kind of see that people are really experimenting down at the, at the bottom but all these three are just so dominant i don't know there's not too much to say about him he adds fake out he helps set up trick room he helps set up tailwind he helps you Fake out stuff. Fake out's good. And Iron Hands does a lot of damage. Next up is Qian Pao. So the Leopard is... Ability is what really makes it shine. So the next two are mainly ability. So how this Pokemon works is it has an ability that lowers the every Pokemon's defense by 25%. Um, which is actually pretty ridiculous. But what's really cool about it is it's not like a status drop. It's not a stat drop. You don't lose that defense. You can't get it back. When he's on the field defense is just cut and so i think it kind of makes it like pretty disgusting because you can't switch out of it you can't do anything to prevent it outside of KOing this pokemon <gasps> so it's doing really well it pairs obviously amazingly with stuff like roaring moon dragonite dragonite is, is currently i'll explain dragonite i'm not really going to touch too much on him but dragonite is that you know what i'll talk about dragonite later but mainly what dragonite's doing is it's terra normaling and spamming extreme speed that's what makes it so good so when you lower their defense, Dragonite likes that. Um, it pairs well with Fluttermane just because their typing is very unique and they, they're very hyper offense, very aggressive Pokemon, so they fit together. And then Roaring Moon as well is one of the best partners. So this Pokemon is just doing numbers. Ice Dark is like crazy. It's just basically a good Weavile. It's fast, has a lot of damage, and you just run Sash on it and you just get like two turns out of it and you get to do big damage with Sucker Punch, Ice Spinner, Protect, and Sacred Sword. Just absolutely just aggressive, hyper offense Pokemon. So number nine here is our good friend Chi Yu. So this is the fish, one of my favorite design Pokemon of this gen. And basically it's the same thing as the leopard, but instead of lowering defense, it lowers special defense. So this guy's best friend is Fluttermane. Fluttermane plus Chi Yu is absolutely disgusting. If you need a combo to build around, start there. It's pretty good. You can't really mess up. Um, but Fluttermane plus Chi Yu is absolutely ridiculous. It's a fire dark type. So again, unique typing. Fire types are just really shining right now. Torkoal, Arcanine. Chiyu. There's three of them in the top 10, which is ridiculous. Um, so mainly, you're just running Heat Wave, you're running Dark Pulse, you can run Lava Plume Overheat, you can just run whatever you want. Um, you can try to do big damage with your with uh, with Dark Pulse. A lot of times this Pokemon will run Scarf or Sash. I think Scarf is the most common item I've seen. We don't have stats yet. But uh, yeah, you can run Snarl for support. It's just a strong Pokemon. It hits like a truck because their special defense is lowered, and it's got a base 135 special attack. It's a very simple Pokemon. Um, the terror types are all over the place, but it looks like it just changes so that it's not weak to the things that it's normally weak to. Which is an interesting trend. Um, a lot of Pokemon will just take the terror type of stuff that they gain resistances from. Like, if you're a Bomb of Snow, you're going to be a Water terror type because you don't want to get hit by fire moves. And that seems to be a very common trend with terror types lately. So number 10, last but not least, Iron Bundle. So this is Delibird in the future. I love this Pokemon. It's so much fun to use. It's very, very splashable. So right now, it's actually not even being really even used with Obama Snow at 10%. So 90% of the time, this Pokemon isn't even used with Hail. Um, it gets access to Freeze Dry, Hydro Pump, Icy Wind. So the main way this Pokemon will function is that you're going to, there's a great speed stat of 136, and what you do is you run Booster Energy, which gives you plus one speed. That's incredible, because with plus one speed, you outspeed everything. And you have this crazy good Icy Wind, which is Stab, and also with dynamic speed it allows the speed drop to happen instantly which makes you a big big threat as a speed control option and so iron bundle will outspeed stuff like fluttermane it will outspeed roaring moon uh chien pao chi yu everything it outspeeds them all and then it just slows them down with icy wind so basically this pokemon is just so so good right now because icy wind is so good so it's just a form of speed control it also gets access to a great hydro pump a great freeze dry double stab ice water is crazy crazy coverage and then you just run protect so it's just 
it's just a really obnoxious Pokemon and it's just really fast and has really great dynamic speed and good coverage. That's really what this Pokemon is coming down to right now. Um, you'll see it a lot with Arcanine. Again, Arcanine's so good. But Dragapult, Iron Hands, Annihilate, Scizor. It, it just kind of pairs with the, well with a lot of a lot of stuff. I think that's actually a team that someone's been using. But yeah, this Pokemon is just very splashable and very good. So now I'm going to give you guys a bonus mon because I want to talk about Dragonite. Because Dragonite's a little weird right now, but it's doing really, really well. So mainly what Dragonite does is it runs Terra Normal. 33% of them. I don't know. I think the Terras are weird, but 33% of them Terra Normal. And so what you do is you can Dragon Dance up. You could have a Life Orb. You could have a Choice Band. And you just spam Extreme Speed. Because we have a big, juicy 134 attack. It gets access to Inner Focus. Yeah, no data. It runs Inner Focus. So you can't get Intimidated. You can't get Faked Out. And you just spam Extreme Speed. It's a very simple Pokemon. Pairs well with the Leopard. Pairs well with Fluttermane. Um, it also gets access to like Iron Head, so you can actually use it to hit Fluttermane, and it just basically can just clean up a game if you're not smart. So I think Dragonite is pretty solid. I think it will go down a little bit in usage, but I think Dragonite is here to stay. It's actually a pretty good mod. So basically, I just talked about the 10 most popular mods right now in the game. Um, it's very early meta, so everything's subject to change. But I think it makes sense. We've got a lot of very flexible Pokemon that are being used. We have some popular strategies with the new um, Runation. Legendaries that pair really well with some of these common Pokemon, such as Roaring Moon. But yeah, it's a very interesting time in the game. It's very exciting. And I just wanted to break down these top 10 Pokemon because we finally got some usage stats. And this is like basically like day three or four. So we can kind of see where the meta is developing. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this type of content. I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow for another video. But thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great and amazing day. I love you all. Please like, comment, subscribe. Helps me out a ton. I'll see you guys later. Bye.